Today I'm assembling the rear suspension and brakes for the Gardo. I've designed and made all the little individual parts and pieces that make up the various components. So um, just watch while I glue them all together and fit them all to the car. So let's do it. So this is the very first piece I'm going to put together. And this is of course the rear main brake caliper. Uh, and now the way that I put this together is I made um, a bunch of like little foam core pieces uh, like this and these are going to make up the main structure the main like underlying structure and give the the brake caliper the shape that it has um, so I just glue this together with PVA glue and then there's one last piece that glues onto the bottom so just a bit of glue on one of its edges like that glue it uh, just in the right position about there and then I print out on glossy photo paper um, the, the coloured parts for the, the caliper. Cut those out carefully and start gluing them around the outside of that foam core piece that I just put together. So you can see I'm putting the first piece on the top, wrapping it around, making sure it's lined up flush with the edges. So now I'm just gluing each of the edges down, folding them underneath, making sure they glue flat. And that makes the edges of those foam core bits underneath just look right, nice and neat and tidy, covers them up. Hold that until it's dry. And now you can just sort of see what I'm doing, like I'm, I'm starting to cover up all the foam core pieces underneath. So what I'll do is I'll just carry on gluing colored pieces over the outside. Um, so there's a big one that goes on the front, uh, like that, heaps glue on the front there like that, stick it over the top, make sure it's in the right spot. And then it has some like little tabs that kind of fold around the edges like that, so a little bit of glue on the side. I use like the edge of tweezers to kind of push that into shape and hold it for a couple of minutes while it dries. Same on the other side. And that just covers up some more of those little foam core edges. And that's the effect that we've got um, so far. It's starting to take shape. Now, one of the edges has this kind of molding. Um, and again, I just use like a, a base piece of foam core board and then cover the outside of that with, with little colored pieces that I've printed out on the photocolor paper, cut out carefully, and then just stick, stick it with glue onto the edge. And that's the effect that we've got um, so far. Now back to the main assembly of the, the caliper itself. I need to like pre-drill some holes for these kind of um, bolts that go through. Um, they will hold the brake pads in place on the real car. But um, I've just made the bolts out of a um, couple of pieces of toothpick, painted them silver, and then pushed them through into the foam core board like that. Nice, so that little molding piece, um, that's ready to go on now. I actually use super glue this time because I want it to be like just instant and strong. Um, once that's glued onto the main color piece, you get something like that. Cool, now there's a couple of little detail pieces that go over the top of the caliper. So I just wrap those around, glue them in place, hold them for a minute or two. Um, and then the inside assembly of the brake caliper needs some work. There's a foam core piece, a little bit of shaping just with a um, craft knife like that. So it follows the form of that underlying um, foam core piece that I've created and stuck it to. Now I've got these wooden skewers. I cut the pointed ends off and push those through the inside of the caliper assembly. And I'm just gonna use those to attach the actual caliper um, to the rest of the car. I would just push into the foam board piece that um, the caliper attaches to. Um, so I push those through, glue them in place, cover the outside of that whole um, inside assembly part just with some kind of decorative um, colored pieces, cover all that foam board up, um, make it all look nice and tidy. Last piece just kind of going on there. Um, you can see that just makes it all look like one single molded colored piece of metal. Um, and that's the effect that we've got. You can see those barbecue skewer points poking down there. Now just some, some final finishing touches. Um, these are just like, again, some, some painted pieces of um, barbecue wooden skewer sticks. I've just painted them yellow and they just push into those little spots there that I've made. Basically they represent like the bleed valves and where the brake lines come in, in and out of on the actual caliper uh, on the real car. And there we go, that's the finished brake caliper. I think it looks pretty good. It'll do the job anyway. Next I'm gonna make the brake disc or the brake rotor assembly. And that's what the back side of that looks like. Uh, so basically I've made this to kind of look like the carbon ceramic disc, which I think was an option on the um, Super Leggero um, Gallardo. So the brake disc is basically constructed of a bunch of paper and cardboard circles I've cut out, just using a circle cutter. And the cross-drilled holes you can see that I made with a confetti punch. 
just to give that cross drilled road a look. So I just glue the discs together. It's basically a cardboard disc in the middle, sandwiched between two sides of metallic, um, metallic paper that I've cut out. Just glue them all together, make sure they're aligned properly. And that creates the, the actual main body of the disc that looks like that. That metallic paper is really nice. Now what I'm doing is constructing the centre hub of the rotor. So on a real car the hub houses the wheel bearing, main wheel bearing, and it also has the holes where the studs that bolt the wheel to the car are. So uh, it's just like several discs of cardboard, again that I've cut out with a circle cutter. Use like a pin right down through the centre to make sure they're all aligned perfectly in the centre. Um, glue them all together with PVA glue, press them until they're dry, and you end up with something like that. So I'll add one more circle of cardboard just as a spacer, and then glue it all together using a pin down through the center again to make sure everything is aligned perfectly. So now I just need to flip it over and add a couple of circles of foam core board. This one's just a spacer and then like the little one that I'm gonna add in a second will just help to locate the rotor when it gets added to the uh, hub, hub carrier. So the brake disc is starting to look pretty complete. I want to just add a few finishing details and um, to do that I'm going to need a series of tiny dots of silver and a bunch of little tiny black paper dots and I'm just going to glue them around the rotor hub um, so they're just meant to represent like the bolts um, or like the heads of the bolts that on the real car would bolt the rotor assembly together so I just go around put a very small drop of glue in each little um, position that I've marked just with like the, a, a fine point of a um, compass and I just place the dot of paper on Gently pressing it down, make sure it's um, glued down nice and flat. So I go around with a series of silver dots of paper, and then on top of that, a slightly smaller dot of black paper, and that's just to make them look like little kind of bolts. So it's really just a pretty easy way to add a bit of detail. Uh, but I think when the car's finished, it will make quite a big difference if you have quite a few tiny little details like that. Using tweezers is really, really useful for these fine little details. And then the very last thing that I'm going to do is just cover up the edge of that foam cord disc on the back just with a strip of black paper. Just glue it all the way around. And there we go. There's the finished rotor. You can see all those little details look good. So I'm going to make the shock absorbers now. This is what one of them looks like here. And these are all the pieces that I've made that uh, comprise of a shock absorber. The main part of it is a piece of colouring and pencil. I chose colouring and pencil because like, you know, it's strong, they're cheap to buy, and I can choose what colour shock absorber I want. Um, so it's just an easy way to get the colours that I um, that I want to choose from. And it's pretty easy, I just like glue little strips of different coloured papers at different points of the shock absorber on, wrapping it around, holding it down flat until it's dry. Um, there's a couple of little discs of foam core board that I slip over uh, at, at various points like that. And then just continue wrapping different coloured pieces of paper around. So yeah, just carry on wrapping different coloured pieces of paper around. Um, just adding details, generally kind of representing different details of a real shock absorber. There's like a second uh, little disc of foam core board that gets added on towards the lower end of the shock absorber. That's like the lower platform that the spring will join onto. And then there's just one last little detail strip. Um, just a little strip of paper that gets glued on, wrap it around, I'm making sure that all the joins um, are kind of at the back or like the side of the shock absorber that won't get seen when it's affixed to the car. So you can see that's the kind of effect that we've got going on now. Now it's time to make the spring, and the spring is just a strip, a very thin strip of paper. And what I'll do is like fix one end of it to a, a colouring in pencil, like that, just with a bit of masking tape. And I'll tightly wind it all the way around. So I'll just wind it all the way to the end of that little strip of paper. And what this is gonna do is it's just gonna put some shape, a, some coil shape into the piece of paper. And so there we go, you can see that just from winding around that once, it's, it's already put that spring shape into it. Although that one end there, um, that's kind of, yeah, you can see it's a bit out of shape. It's, it's not quite as tightly um, formed and it looks a bit different to the rest of the coil spring. So I'll just gently um, tweak it in a little bit so it's a bit more like the rest of it. And then I can just wind that over the um, rest of the shock absorber that I've already made. Yeah, glue one end of the coil spring on. That's what I'm doing there. And then I'll glue the um, lower end of the spring on. And then once that's dry, I can just like twist and coil up the spring to put a bit of tension on it. And that just pulls all nicely into shape. 
And then to finish, there's just a few little um, detail strips to cover the joins, to cover the, the ends of the coil spring that I glued on just a second ago. So just a couple of strips of different colored paper and that just finishes it off really nice. And there we go, finished shock absorber. The last thing to do uh, relating to the shock absorber is just fold up this little bracket. And this bracket attaches to the rear frame of the Gallardo and then the, the top of the shock absorber kind of bolts. Oh, I'll just use a piece of um, toothpick, but it will bolt through the top of this little bracket that I'm making now. So I just fold up out of a piece of cardboard, glue the, glue the little tabs together, use a couple of clips to kind of hold it in place while it dries and then this little bracket will be done. Cool, and that's what the final little bracket that I just folded up looks like. It's kind of double layered so it's nice and strong. Now I'm gonna make this thing, and this is the rear hub carrier. Basically all the upper and lower suspension arms, the brake calipers, the shock absorbers, the brake rotors, um, the drive shafts, they all attach to this thing here. So it's a pretty important piece and it needs to be really strong. Um, so you'll see what I mean a bit later on anyway. But the way that I've designed and made this is that it's um, effectively two pieces of cardboard uh, shaped and folded up, with little joined with little tabs like this at the bottom. Um, and the two pieces kind of sit one inside of each other. So it's kind of, again, double layered and nice and strong. I just use clips when I'm gluing this together so it holds it in place while it dries and I can carry on gluing other bits and not have to sit there and hold it. Um, you use heaps of glue on the joints so that it's nice and strong. Here I'm folding up the second piece that will fit inside that first one that I just glued up. So I put a bit of glue inside that first one. Oh, a fair amount of glue actually. Don't be too skimpy on the glue there. Fit that second piece inside. Make sure everything's aligned up properly. That's probably the hardest part with this piece. Make sure that second piece is just aligned in the right spot so that it all lines up properly. Again, use heaps of these little clips to hold it all while it dries. Then once that's dry, there's a piece of um, foam core board that glues onto the uh, side of it like that. That piece there, that, that's what the brake calipers are gonna mount onto. Once it's all dry and all the clips are taken off, it looks like that. So I'm gonna to wanna to spray paint that silver, um, as you can see I've done there, and then do some just some final finishing pieces around, glued around the edges. You'll see that I use this technique quite a lot, but I just like finish a piece off by adding these little strips around the edge to cover that foam board. And that just makes it look a lot more um, finished and neater and kind of more professional, I guess. Now um, the axle is actually just this little split pin clip thing that I've got. I'm just gonna shape it and make sure it's um, gonna line up flat with the edge of the cardboard when I put it through. Um, I put it through from one side and I'm gonna glue it in place with um, a whole bunch of um, super glue. This has to be attached on there really strong because the brake rotor attaches to that and then the wheel attaches to the brake rotor. You don't want the wheel falling off. So once I've done that, that's how it looks. Looks pretty good. This little guy is the e-brake or the emergency brake. And this is basically what comes on when you put the handbrake on. Um, so it's pretty simple, there's about um, well, four pieces. Uh, the main body of the e-brake the, the e is just folded up and glued uh, in, sh in shape like that. And then there's a paper part that gets glued onto the side and that really gives it the e-brake the e shape or character if you like. Carefully glue it in position just with PVA glue. Make sure it's in the right spot. Yep, so that looks about right. And then on the side where it actually mounts onto the um, hub carrier, there's a little strip of cardboard and then a couple of pointed little pieces of toothpick that I'll use to join it onto the car. And then just some tiny detail pieces, some tiny little dots of paper. They represent the bolts that would hold the e-brake caliper together and hold the brake pads in. Uh, just use tweezers. And then there we go, that's the e-brake done. So this is the upper suspension arm and this is the lower suspension arm. Uh, to make these, it's pretty straightforward. It's just a piece of cardboard glued to a piece of foam core board once that's dry, I spray paint it silver and then just put a strip of silver paper around each edge to kind of finish it off and it gives it a bit of strength as well. Um, and that's what the finished upper arm looks like. And I just do the same process with the lower arm. So the last real bit of construction I need to do is to make this the rear stabilizer bar. Well, this is half of the rear stabilizer bar anyway. Um, there's a few tiny little bits that I need to make. This is the linkage. I just cut it out of a couple of bits of um, like ice cream stick, stick those together. And then there's a little bit of um, toothpick that gets um, glued onto the top of that. 
Um, this is the actual stabilizer bar itself. It's actually just like a drinking straw. I utilize the bendy part to make the curve in the stabilizer bar. I'm using the special um, Sally's All Plastics glue and I'm wearing gloves this time because it's really nasty stuff if you get it on your skin. Um, so I, what I do is I put a bit of that glue in one end and kind of crimp it shut just with a pair of pliers. So that makes like a flat surface for the end of the stabilizer bar to join onto the linkage bar. Once that's dry, I punch a little hole on the end of that. A tiny strip of um, five millimeter thick foam core board gets put into one end of the stabilizer bar. And I can use that to join two halves of the stabilizer bar together. Cool. So that's what the end of the stabilizer bar looks like. And that's what the other half of the, the stabilizer bar will kind of push onto, join onto. This is the little mounting block that will join onto the rear frame car. Let's make like a few little pieces of bent paper, uh, just making a little bracket. Press it down with the side of the tweezers and then you can see like the side of the stabilizer bar goes in under the bracket like that and I can join the, the other half of the bracket to the mounting block. Just glue that down. There's one tiny little piece of finishing um, paper that gets glued over the top. And that's half of the stabilizer bar done, ready to go. Now the very last thing to do before I do all the final assembly of all those bits and pieces I've just been making um, onto the car is just to prepare these little things that are like, basically like the bolts that will hold them all together. They're just bits of toothpick and barbecue bamboo skewer that I've painted black and silver as I need to. Um, and that completes all of the bits and pieces um, ready to be put onto the car now. Awesome. So now I'm gonna start assembling everything onto the car. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is glue on that little top mount bracket for the shock absorber. That just gets glued onto the rear frame with um, super glue. Then I'm gonna glue on the bracket that the rear stabilizer bar will join onto, onto the rear frame as well. Again, using super glue. As soon as that's dry, I can fit the rear stabilizer bar. You can see I'm joining it up with the other half of the stabilizer bar. It just pushes in using that little connector piece of foam board. You can see I'm using those toothpick bolts to kind of connect everything up and still make up like fixable joints. Um, and same with this little pin that I'm putting through here. Just put the pin through the top of the upper suspension arm. Use a, a tiny little disc of five millimeter thick foam board as like a bush um, so that uh, that arm will have some movement, can move up and down and it's not completely rigid like that. Just testing it and kind of loosening it up a little bit. Tiny bits of barbecue skewer um, to join that entire um, upper and lower suspension arm assembly to the actual car. They just push into the foam board and they can still move around. They provide like, you know, movement for the suspension and they're easy to kind of put in and take on and off. And I'm just testing the motion of the suspension there now. Yeah, so that works, that looks good. Time to fit the um, brake rotor, the brake disc assembly. It pushes onto that little split pin that I super glued into the hub carrier. Push that into place, locating it with the foam board discs on the inner side. Snip the little pin off to length and bend the ends down to hold it in place. Now the shock absorber goes in. Again, a little piece of barbecue skewer or toothpick at the top and the bottom to act like bolts, hold it in place. Um, and then there's just a little kind of wooden linkage to fit in there. Get the um, toothpick bolt push through everything and that holds it all in place. Push on the e-brake, push on the main caliper, just pushes into the foam board with those two little pointy bits of toothpick on the inside sticking out. And um, just do some finishing touches. Touch up with some black paint here and there and some silver paint and it's all done. Good to go. There's the final rear suspension and brakes for the Gardo. All done. Looks great. Thanks for watching.